So ever since Splatoon 2 came out, I've been playing a lot of it. And I've been wondering what on earth happens to Inklings when they end up in water? This prompted me to do what every 20 something year old on the internet does in this situation, and I decided to Google it. Which as you can imagine, didn't help. I got hundreds of different responses, many, many different theories, and just a lot of disagreement on what everybody else thought the actual facts were. I saw that they're just out of bound areas that teleport the inkling back to the start when they touch it. it. Doesn't kill them, why would parents let their children fight in an arena where they could die at any second? Another common one I received was the inklings are made out of ink and when we're in water, inklings, being made out of a denser liquid, lose their surface tension and break apart, diffusing into the water. And finally, inklings just can't swim so they drown. So which is it? Is it all of them? Why can't Inklings swim? I mean, according to various characters, like the Squid Sisters and Pearl and Marina, they just can't swim. So is that actually canon? Quick side note, I see what you do in Nintendo. Pearl and Marina? What is a marina? It's a harbour. Or a type of harbour. Pearl, harbour. Pearl and harbour. So is it just an Out of Bounds area? What about Salmon Run? We'll be answering all of this in this theory video, so strap yourselves in and let's get on with it. So after doing lots of research into this topic, playing and freeze framing hours and hours of Splatoon clips, and searching through many articles, forums, etc, I think I finally may have worked it out. In the Splatoon wiki they cover what happens when the inkling is splatted, or falls in water. The wiki states, Inklings do not actually die in game, however they can be splatted in one of three ways, from water, enemy ink, or falling off of a ledge. When they fall in the water, because they are already made out of liquid, they will dissolve, leaving their clothes and weapon in the water. When they are splattered from enemy fire, the Inklings weapons and clothes will fall to the ground, while the Inkling will explode in the enemy's colour. When they are splattered like this, a ghost that looks like the squid form Inkling will float in the air. Also, if an Inkling falls off a level in hero mode, they will explode as well, but in their own ink colour, after which they will respawn at the spawn point or at a checkpoint. So okay, if they do not die, then how do they actually get back to the spawn point? What are these ghosts? Why don't they need to get back to a spawn point in Salmon Run, but need to a normal game? We can't just take all this information for granted, there has to be something more. Why is it they have to respawn when they hit the water or get splattered? And more to the point, if this is the case, and they dissolve in water, why is it that in the Splatoon manga, brought out with some issues of Koro Koro, they show a panel where all the Inklings are in water, not dissolving, with a PSA, Inklings can't swim. So I think we need to break this down, first starting with what are Inklings? From my research I've found that Inklings are not these big inky squids that we have grown to know. No, without the ink, Inklings look much different. To be precise, Inklings look like smaller, more basic versions of their swimming form, as shown by all these clips. The Inklings' real forms are the ghosts that the wiki mentioned. When an Inkling comes into contact with ink, it is able to protect itself with a layer of ink which allows it a sort of second life. This layer of ink protects it from the outside world and is this body that we see. To further provide proof that this body is just liquid ink controlled into a shape and colour, we have to look at the fact that inklings can move in ways solid vertebrate creatures would struggle to navigate. Just look at inklings swimming through small stream paths, or even through chain link fences and slotted floors. This we can argue means that the ink is always liquid and can also mean that it isn't a permanent form of protection. Further on from this we can see that when an inkling opens its mouth. The inside of its mouth is the same colour as their hair or ink. And even more so when an inkling falls into water we see the ink dissolve away and what are we left with? A pile of sodden clothes, a gun and our little inkling's ghostly true form. So where can we go from here? We have footage of inklings dissolving in water. We have proof that inklings are just tiny squids driving the ink as some sort of inky mech. We have an image of inklings in water not dissolving and we have hundreds of angry commenters shouting at each other over what they think is the actual answer. What if I told you that in one way or another every single person is correct. Even those people who will comment with it's just a video game for kids, who cares? Because in a way, yeah, they are correct, and you know, it is just a video game for kids, but at the same time, we have to be thinking about stuff while we're out there splatting inklings and shouting woo me. Sorry, I'll, I'll, I'll never say that again. No, I believe that all three explanations for what goes on when an inkling hits water is correct, but let's just go through them one by one. One of the most popular explanations I've seen are people stating that inklings simply just get taken back to spawn. And I agree with this, it's very likely, but we also have to take into account that in Salmon Run, they don't get taken back to spawn. Instead, they use their life preserver to, um, preserve their life? This means that as this is how it works with every single inkling in Salmon Run, there has to be something that all main game mode inklings have that allows them to get back to the respawn point whenever they fall in water or get splattered. There has to be an object that they all have, 
something you never see an inkling without, apart from when they're in Salmon Run. Yes, the ink tank. This is something that all Inklings have in main game modes, and you'll never see them without it. What's to say that these tanks don't contain the recall ability meaning, but whenever the Inkling needs to get back to the spawn point, this knows and sends him back there, as you can see whenever an Inkling is exposed. But then to build on this, in Salmon Run they don't have these tanks, they have a life preserver which works as a tank, and whenever they get hit or fall in water, their behaviour is drastically different. No longer do they get brought all the way back to the spawn point, no. They attach themselves onto their little life preserver and wait for someone to shoot them with ink. So now how does this fit in with the other explanations? Easily. When you see an inkling end up in water, you can see them dissolve, as the liquids they are made out of is a lot denser than the water. And what happens when a denser liquid is poured into a less dense liquid, for instance squash or cordial into water, diffuses or dilutes into the water. What's to say that when the inkling ends up in the water they actually just can't swim? Because as they try and move their limbs they start dissolving, meaning they start to break apart as they lose their ink and they're unable to hold their bipedal form. And then when the tank realises that this is about to happen, it sends out a signal and the inkling is recalled leaving its weapons and its clothes in the water behind. And you can see this happening. When it ends up back at the spawn point, it picks up enough ink to protect itself once again, and gets back into the fight. When the Inklings take damage in the game, if they swim around in their own ink for a while, it sheds their opponent's coloured ink that has been breaking them apart, and allows them to top themselves back up. This is why they do not shoot their own ink and need to use a tank because the more ink they shoot, the less safe the Inkling is. You ever wondered why an Inkling moves slower in the enemy's ink? It's because it's struggling to keep itself in one piece. In Salmon Run, whenever they get splattered or end up in water, you see their inky form attach itself to the life preserve. This keeps them safe until finally another team member provides them with enough ink to allow them to regain their offensive bipedal form once more. And even more onto this, if there is a team wipe, it means that all team members are sheltering in the life preserver, and none of the team can shoot at their ink to get the crew member back up, which means they lose. Whereas in the main game mode, they just keep respawning until end of time. This means that the recall facility is inside of the tank. Or perhaps it's to do with that red light you see on top of the tank. But what happens if the Inkling stays in the water and doesn't get recalled? Well I think this is where the danger happens. Being land creatures, or creatures that can breathe in their own ink, and in air, it would seem that when they are in water, they are unable to breathe and can drown, not having any ability to propel themselves out of the water. This means that the water is actually deadly to the Inkling, but with the recall facility and the life preserver, they are still safe and nothing bad will happen to them. It might also be worth noting that in a future video it might be interesting to actually explore whether or not they can breathe in air, and whether or not they actually have to use their inky housing around them as a form of spacesuit. Like they can only breathe in their ink and not in air, which means that if they end up in water it just dissolves away their ink and they can no longer breathe and they drown. And they have to have the ink around them normally because they can't breathe in air either, they can only breathe in their own ink. I mean it's something worth thinking about. So to conclude, it is all of these things. They cannot breathe under the water anymore. And when they fall into it, they thrash around every second losing their inky protection. And just before they start to sink or drown, they are recalled or saved by their life tank or preserver. Meaning for once, I believe everyone might be correct. So now we just have the small problem of plot hole with this theory. As I mentioned before, the manga. In the manga they are not dissolving under the water, or it would seem that they are not. Remember, as much as drawings can display movement with long lines, shading, and however else these artistically talented people can show movement in a still image, I believe that the image was drawn perhaps right before, or even because the Inklings are not thrashing around, they have managed to hold their form a lot longer. As in the image, they are all just standing there at the bottom of the pool, not thrashing around like in the games. Though I have to note, for a universe which water is very deadly to creatures, like even more so than the fact that water is deadly to us, they don't half have it around a lot. Which poses the question, why is there a lot of water? Are they fighting off the aliens from signs? No, I believe that the manga panel is just before they start dissolving. So maybe there's that second where you drop the drip of ink into the water, and it holds its form long enough before finally breaking apart. Meaning I believe that our theory here is sound. They cannot breathe underwater, and when they move into it they thrash around and dissolve, causing their little driver, or whatever you want to call it, their true form, to start drowning in the water. Their tank realises this and calls them back. So this has been my theory on inklings in water, and remember, it is only a theory. I would love to hear your thoughts and feelings on the topic in the comments. 
So please feel free, and if you guys liked this video, a theory video which isn't Pokemon for once, then do tell me as I have plenty more where this came from. So thank you all for watching and I'll see you all in the next.